So I'm gonna start off with the 3D compressor. There's a few things that you wanna do first. The first thing that I always do is scan the serial number. Right, get Copa Mobile out. Uh, I did one a few weeks back, a training on Copa Mobile. Get the app out and scan uh, the serial number or the model number. If you can't scan it, put it in. To find out what uh, this compressor's uh, electrical is, the mechanical, the performance, the diagnostics of the compressor itself. That is step one. Uh, for me, step two is checking the electrical. So after you uh, pump down the compressor, so you loosen your uh, suction service valve packing, you uh, close your suction service valve, tighten the packing, pump that compressor down, uh, down to uh, one PSI, remove, remove the gas properly, shut your discharge uh, valve properly, and then lock and tag out your electrical. Then what you wanna do is uh, take off your plate and you wanna compare your winding resistance to Copa Mobile. So let me just turn on this here. So hopefully you can see that. So I always like to go right from, this go, these go right to the winding, so I always go right on the top. So I'm getting some resistance there, 661. There's three phase, so you go across all of them. 2.5 and then 660. So I did take uh, this apart a little bit, so it'll save me some time in the video. Then go to ground, find a good, good place on the compressor, good ground on the compressor. Look, so I'm getting resistance to ground. Well, this, so we know we got some, bad electrics, but you're not done there. See how I've taken off the screws here? So let's, let's take this off. This is a terminal plate insulator. This here, realistically, there, this could be damaged. This could be cracked. It could have carbon tracking. That could be the issue. We take a look, that doesn't look bad, okay? There are screws that go on here that I ta I've taken off. So this is another insulator plate, okay? this could be the problem, like there's a part number even on it. I've seen compressors come back, 6Ds, 4Ds, with fail terminal plates, but the compressors were totally fine, they could have replaced this. So if you have bad windings, then you go right from here and you check them from here and let's see. So I still have bad windings, as you can see. So I got an electrical issue for sure, but what causes electrical issue? I wanna point out one thing, Two, is that if you're putting these on, there's proper tor values. See how this moves right here, up and down? That is connected to the winding. So if you just put these screws on and tighten them, and tighten them as hard as you can, what we've seen is underneath here, it damage is the connection to the windings. And we've seen them after six months, a year, two years, because the guys didn't use the proper torque values for these nuts, uh, led to a, a failure for the compressor. So we know we checked as an electrical failure, but really what causes electrical failure now? That's the next step. So let's take the head off. Like I said, most, a lot of mechanics are not doing this. Uh, so I loosen the bolts up first, but what you really want to do is you don't want to just pull off the bolts, knock it, and, and take the compressor head off uh, because this is discharge gas. So all this is discharge gas here. Here's your discharge port, and there could be pressure under here. So what you can do is pull off a plug. So let's just pull out the plug. Make sure there's no pressure in there because you don't want, if there's oil or ga uh, gas in there, you don't want that blown in your face. Another way to do it is leaving two of these down below, then knocking it. And then, so it doesn't blow the head off if there's a lot of pressure on there. So that's step one, is to relieve the pressure there if there's any. So after these are, bolts are all loosened, I think we're gonna... Okay, so what you wanna do is inspect the head gasket. So make sure the head gasket, and see if there's any cracks. So this one here looks okay. You want to inspect to see if it's cracked or if there's carbon tracking in it. Just put this down here. So now we'll take a look. So I see multiple things right now. A lot of guys, when they see this, they're going to say, oh, it's overheating right away. But if you can see me, 
You can see how I'm rubbing that off. That is mechanical wear. That is not overheat. So just be aware of that. This is mechanical wear. See how I just cleaned all that off? Mechanical wear. But what do we see here? Look at this. This is your discharge backing and look how the bolts backed out and now we're all damaged. What caused that? What could cause this? I really, this is all I had to do. I don't have to go any further. I know just from looking at this, what things would cause this, right? And this is by compressing a liquid. So this took a slug. What happens with a slug, it stretches these bolts. Compressor still runs, there's still some vibration. Backs these bolts out. This bounces around in here. And then let, let's look inside here. So just move this to the side. Here's our disc, look, it's upside down. So this goes in like this. So this here was, was busted. So all I know, all I see right now is that my discharge uh, is damaged and you'll see that with a slug. So now I wanna take a look here. I don't see, it's a good way to check if there's any carbon tracker from your head gasket. Let's look on the inside. So now we're looking at the inside. Look, look, we can see here, this one's all missed. This is a Delta Reed compressor, not a floating reed, because you can see they're riveted in there. This one's bent back, but you can see it's damaged up there, okay? These ones are still good, but you can see that lots of damage there. So, and then when you look in here, what you wanna do is check, see if, it, if the compressor pumps. So maybe hard, oh, oh yeah, there we go. So it pumps, so we know it still pumps mechanically. So what we wanna do, a lot of times what you'll get when you get a blown, uh, blown discharge is pressure pushing down and you can see how damaged this is up. Just say if we just, we had this valve damage but inside here was not damaged at all, you might just have a valve replacement. But we see there's so much damage inside here because of, uh, of that slug, this compressor will have to be replaced. Now, what do you need to look for? I mean, what caused it, right? So the things to look for, crankcase heater, was that working? You know, is it in the right ambient? Did you have pump down on that system? Did it need pump down? Different things like that. The next thing, just say this was all good and you just had the, a blown discharge, that was it, but everything looked here good. You wanna check the wrist pin because you could replace the, the valve plate but have a damaged wrist pin. And how you do that is by putting the damaged the, uh, piston or the damaged valve plate, so we know it was this one to this one, Put it top dead center and push down, see if it drops. I don't know if you've just seen that, but that just dropped. And now I know I got a damaged wrist pin because the pressure pushing down on this uh, wrist pin. And I'll show you again when I, take, when I take the pump off. So, but I don't really have to go any further on this compressor. We know it took a slug. You now you need to figure out what caused that slug. This slug led to an electrical issue. Okay, so just say you couldn't, you could, this wouldn't pump, just say you couldn't make this pump. Next step is to take the pump off. You don't have to take the housing off. This is the pump, this is the housing. Just take the pump off and then you take a screwdriver or, or something to see if it, if it uh, will turn, the crank will turn. Because you want to do it in a step-by-step uh, step process just to verify how you take your uh, net oil pressure as well. Show you right quick. You always want to do it from here, this side right here, because this is where you have the Schrader in it. This one doesn't, so never take that off. It'll blow oil in your face if you, the compressor is running. So take it off here. Put your gauge here and right on here. So it should be crank and, and the oil pump. Some guys do it from the suction, but there's always a two PSI different between the, the, the motor housing and the crank. Two PSI difference, okay? So you take from here to here, 
Your net oil pressure can be between, be between 20 and 40. Even 50 would work. When you get up to 60 though, that's over the, the bypass. So it has a spring bypass in there that's too high. Or if you can run it, you would run even at 15 PSI, but the Syntronics and the Core Sense, they'll trip out at, uh, or the compressor electronics will trip out at, uh, I think it's uh, 7 to 9 PSI D. So just be aware of that as well. So you would take it here and then you would spin it to see if it would spin. So if you couldn't pump it, you would just get a flat head and see if it would spin. And yeah, now you can. So she, she, still, she still pumps. Let's check that guide again. See how that wrist pin drops? So the damaged wrist pin. Okay, next step. Just say you couldn't find anything from here is pulling off the oil pump to look look inside. So you can do this all in the field while it's even still on a rack. I know it's a little difficult, but if you get this far, um, you don't have to drop the oil, right? You shouldn't have to drop the oil. So let me just try to take this off. So what you, what you wanna do is take a look inside here at a pump, see if there's any marks or any gouges out of, out of the pump. There's precision drilled holing, holes to get the oil to be pumped through here. So another major check that you want to always do when you pull a compressor apart, because if you owned out this compressor and it was an electrical failure and you don't pull off the head and you don't pull off at least the pump and the housing to check what caused that to fail, that compressor, you, you won't know really what caused it. And that's really what we're looking for. We need to figure out what caused the failure because most electrical failures are due from mechanical issues. Electrical failures are second cause of failure. So if I came up to this compressor and I ohmed it out and it was a dead short or it was an electrical failure, one of the checks I want to do is called the shake hands with the crankshaft check. And so really what you want to do is see if there's any up and down play. If there's up and down play, that means this, the main bearing, which is, the main bearing is in the separation between the stator and the crank. And you want to see if there's any up and down play. So what you want to do is see if there's any up and down play. So I have really no up and down play here. But you can have back and forth play, but up and down play, there's really nothing. So I know that this compressor didn't have any flood back. What happens when you have flood back the main bearing is the last place to see oil and the oil becomes displaced. As the oil travels through the crankshaft, lubricating the bearings, that main bearing is the last one to get oil. So that liquid refrigerant, that's a good solvent, it starts to displace the oil and it wears the main bearing. And if you have up and down play, that means that main bearing is wore, which really drops the rotor a bit onto the stator and then you get rotor drag, and that rotor drag leads to an electrical failure. So always check to see if you have any main bearing wear. So here's another tip I wanna show you. So if you do have service valves and you had to change a compressor and you pull it off and you have a damaged gasket like this, you're always gonna to wanna to replace it with a new gasket. Go to your local Copeland authorized wholesaler, get one, put one in because you could, you'll get a leak. The next thing I wanna show you is these steel rubber coated gaskets. So this is a used one here. But what you want to make sure is that uh, we call it the embossing, but it's really the, the humps out. You want those out or the embossing pointed towards you. You see how these are indented? You would never want to put it on that way. You always want these pointing towards you, the installer. Then you want to use uh, AE1419, I believe it's called, for the bolt torques. So make sure you properly torque this on. And these stainless, uh, these, uh, sorry, these steel rubber coated gaskets, they are on the housing cover, they can be on the oil pump, uh, as well as the bottom cover uh, for the four and 60s. You'll see these also on uh, 3Ds and 2D compressors. 
but make sure that you always have the ribs pointing out towards you. Okay, I have a 6D compressor here. This one came out of the field under warranty. As you can see, 6D. You always want to scan with Copa Mobile. I just want to show you a few parts. All that was wrong with this compressor here, it was, it took a slug, smashed the discharge, banged up the suction a little bit. We've tested it, this compressor ran, so potentially they could have just replaced this valve plate and the compressor would have been still good, but they didn't pull the head off or anything. So a couple of things to note, here's a, a check valve. This is your oil check valve, disc type, free floating. Uh, upon a flooded start and start up this will close this will stop any oil from going into the body this is where the stator is okay this is the crank section right here where the pistons would be right up here is your vent uh your vent what will happen is this as the compressor starts to run will send pressure into the body so the body has a two psi higher than the crank other things is this is your oil pickup feed you see how this is pointing down this needs to be pointing down as you can see if i turn it the other way it doesn't fit in properly but you will jam that in there anyway and it will it will close but you see how it's all over the place if i put it in there there's a proper seating of it we also have the internal pressure relief right here separates the suction and discharge you can see there 462 psi so that goes right inside here on our 4 and 6d compressors so let's talk about the sensors uh, these go back to your core sense or your compressor electronics and what you want to measure is between common and each of the sensors and we're getting 56 we got a short and 45. So any sensors or any compressors predate 2004, uh, they're around 500 ohms and all the newer ones around 30 ohms. So I got around 56 ohms. But as you can see, we have a dead short here. So what you need to do if you get one of these, uh, uh, either a short or an open winding or an open one, if it's close to zero like this, it's a short. If it's infinity, it's open. And what you need to do is put uh, from this sensor wire, this one here, you're going to want to connect this wire to a 1 watt 2200 2, ohm resistor and then connect it to back to common like that with the resistor in there to bypass that internal sensor. That internal sensor was damaged uh, most likely due to heat, but you can bypass that sensor if you need to with an emergency bypass resistor. One thing that you have to be aware of though, if another one fails, you, there's damage already done. So you should talk to the customer about uh, looking at replacing that compressor because if a second one fails, then you do have to replace that, that compressor.